ancient eldritch creature and the title character and main antagonist of the 1986 novel. It is a creature among the others, called the Dead Lights, which is a shape-shifting tribe of fear eaters originating from a void dimension outside of the regions of space, known as the Dark Macroverse, heavily connected to the Dark Towers universe. Anything that it can potentially invoke fear into will most likely become the creature's choice of consumption. It had arrived on Earth in a massive worldwide cataclysmic event, crash landing on Earth in what would become Derry, Maine, similar to that of an asteroid colliding with Earth, resulting in a devastating catastrophe. This cataclysmic event from Stephen King's novel comes from a very real worldwide catastrophe that not one scientist, geographer, astrophysicist, or even the Central Intelligence Agency knows exactly what happened. All they know is it brought earthquakes and massive volcanic eruptions, which blotted out the sun, resulted in famine, death, 100-pound hailstones, an ice age, and a remnant of surviving people. And it all happened just over 200 years ago. This cataclysmic event was prophesied through the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 6 and 7 as a means of righteous judgment among the unjust of Jerusalem and all of its dominions around the earth. In the description below, you will find a more thorough explanation of this event in the third and final segment of the tithing series titled The Governmental Matrix. It's unknown what it was feeding on while living in the macroverse before arriving on Earth. However, given its self-proclaimed status as the eater of worlds, it most likely lived as a nomad and an interdimensional parasite, draining one world after another of its resources to fill its enormous appetite and leaving nothing but lifeless worlds in its wake. Very similar to the DC Comics supervillain, Parallax, which is a demonic parasitic entity dating back to the dawn of time. Parallax is the sentient embodiment of fear, traveling from world to world and causing entire civilizations to destroy themselves out of paranoia. Parallax has even swayed the minds of Kal-El, the last son of Krypton, and also Hal Jordan of the Green Lantern Corp. It can do the very same thing manipulating the minds of troubled individuals and pinning them against one another. It can morph into any other person, animal, or object which would be useful to him, appearing as his target's loved ones or friends, or appearing as the target's worst fear imaginable. But tell me, how is it being back in Derry? But it only knows of that particular fear by the target revealing their fear to it at some point in the target's life. In chapter one of the 2017 film, seven young children became the center of its fear-inducing subjects, banding them together, known as the Losers Club. Instead of killing his targets instantly, it chooses to instill as much fear as it can due to the fact that the adrenal glands of the human body produces epinephrine and cortisol rushing glucose into the muscles, causing them to become more tense. This is exactly what it wants before he consumes his victims, as the chemicals adds more flavor to his victims. It uses the alias and appearance of Pennywise the Dancing Clown, as the creature has learned that clowns lures in children the easiest. Popcorn? Popcorn! Is that your favorite? Uh-huh. Well, I do! <laughs> because they pop. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. <laughs> pop, 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 <laughs> At times, it has used the alias of Robert Bob Gray, as in Albert Fish, also known as the Gray Man, who was an American serial killer, child molester, and cannibal, who eventually received the death penalty in 1936. Fear 
is the very tool it uses since his beginning. Very similar how our adversary operates when it comes to us, bearing our personal cross as we journey through life, deflecting the wicked one's fear-laced fiery darts as spoken of in Ephesians chapter six. When it comes to fear, we are instructed how to handle it per Ephesians chapter four, verse 27 through 28 nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. The word place in this context is the Greek word topos, meaning condition or opportunity. This verse parallels itself with the words of Elohim, speaking to our adversary about Job in chapter one, verse eight, through verse 12. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears Elohim and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear Elohim for nothing? Have you made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. We see that Elohim operates in order and that his word does not return to him void, being that the first Adam gave dominion of the earth, including all of its resources over to the adversary. By way of heeding the adversary's word over Elohim's word, which automatically placed us as children of sin, being that Satan is the father of lies and sin simultaneously. As our adversary stripped everything from Job, Job displays an example to future readers of his testimony that our adversary comes like a thief in the night to steal, kill, and destroy, but can only go as far as we let him. Job also displayed not to fear our adversary as Elohim has shown through the forefathers that we are not to fear those who practice disobedience, but only the one with true ultimate power as Christ reminds us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 27 through 28. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And whatever you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. This scripture is the main inspiration for creating the essence of it with the twist and perversion of Elohim's words. Christ states that whatever he tells you in the dark, speak it in the light. But our adversary has it taking hold of you within his kingdom of darkness, destroying your body and claiming your soul, allowing your soul to be trapped within darkness. And all you can do is speak in the void of the lights and thus you have it a creature of the dead lights trapping its victims within the macroverse and their dead bodies to float in the shape of a tower the inspiration for this tower is found within the macroverse and other novels such as the dark tower being the center of all creation and is said to be gan's body and is held up by six beams of great stature. Gan is the god of the macroverse, and to reach him, there are portals at each end of the six beams, for a total of 12 portals, each highly protected by 12 guardians across an infinite number of worlds. Within the dark macroverse, Gan is derived from Genesis chapter three, verse one. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, has Elohim indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. 
The Hebrew word for garden is gan, as fenced in or enclosure. This dark tower of gan is also another perversion of Elohim's creation, known as heaven, with it being the top end of all of his creation. The dark tower is a stone structure standing at the center of all worlds, such as end world, mid world, and end world. Its most famous quote that he says to almost all of his victims is, You'll float too, you'll float too. You'll float too, you'll float too. You'll float too. Time to float. The you will float too reference is referring to it causing its victim's corpse to float after losing their souls to the deadlights, which originates from Lucifer's biblical quotes, also known as his famous I wills. In a conversation with Elohim in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Just as it ascends over his floating corpse, our adversary seeks to ascend over and sit at the top of the Mount of Congregation, which is the Hebrew word Moed, meaning the appointed, which is you and me, the church, the bride of Christ. Elohim calls Lucifer, son of the morning, which is the Hebrew word Sahar, meaning early or rising light. Hence we have it causing his victims, the congregation to rise or to float upon viewing his dead lights. Now it does have an adversary, his very own, known as the Maturin, or the Tortoise, one of the twelve guardians who guard one of the six beams of the Dark Tower, and he appears to carry the earth on the top of his shell, founded upon pillars. This description of a disc-like earth on the Maturin is derived from the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 4 through 6. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? The Hebrew word for line is quav, defined as measuring a rim. The Hebrew word for foundations in verse 4 is the word yasad, meaning ordained or to take counsel. Elohim is referring to the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was just the three of them conversing about creation itself. And Elohim asked Job, were you there? As a way of showing Job Elohim's omnipotence. In verse six, the word foundations is very different. It is the word Eden, meaning a building, a column, or even better, multiple pedestals of gold or pedestals of the earth. The word cornerstone is the Hebrew word pena, meaning an angle on a pinnacle of square objects. As stated before, the Maturin is one of the 12 guardians of the six beams connected to the dark tower. There are two portals at the end of each beam guarded by 12 guardians. The tower is based on being the center of all creation of the macroverse, having the 12 guardians originating from scripture as the description of Elohim's great city, the holy Jerusalem, which descends out of heaven onto an earth made new. This is the place that Christ spoke about before he ascends to the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf in John chapter 14, verse two through verse three. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The Dark Tower and its 12 guardians is an exact depiction of Elohim's new Jerusalem city, 
Revelation chapter 21 verse 9 through 13 states, Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues, came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from Elohim, having the glory of Elohim. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also she had a great and high wall with the twelve gates, and twelve angels at the gates, and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west, surrounding the dark tower, which seems to be in the midst of a wasteland, are blood-redded roses beyond the end world, known as the Kanka no Re. This blood-redded rose field originates from the book of Isaiah chapter 35 verse 1. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. The word rose is the Hebrew word habasalet, meaning a metal saffron. Thus, the blood-redded rose surrounding the dark tower. It's been 27 years since the Losers Club temporarily defeated the deadlight creature. The members of the Losers Club are back in Derry, Maine, and find themselves up against it once again in chapter two. Very often, the number 27 is considered to be the symbol of the Holy Spirit, while sometimes it is said that the number 27 could symbolize divine light or the light that is appearing in the darkness. Fear.